I'm Carolyn Hancock. Uh, how do you transport your paintings to exhibition? For me, it's always been a cardboard box, um, bubble wrap it to infinity, any way that I could find to protect the pastel painting while it was in transit. I've come up with something that is very quick and easy to assemble and very sturdy. I think you're going to love it. To make this carrier for pastel paintings, I'm using this product from Home Depot. It is, the brand name is Reflectix, R-E-F-L-E-C-T-I-X. It's available in different sizes. This one is uh, 24 inches by 10 feet. I cost about $10. I bought this one first just to experiment, to find out, well, how difficult it was. Could I really use it? Did I think it was going to work? Um, but then I have, and it did, it did. Um, I loved it. Um, but since I have about 16 paintings to transport, I needed a little bit more material than this. So another trip to Home Depot to get the bigger roll, which is 25 feet by 48 inches wide. It cuts very easily with scissors, peels up the side with this aluminum um, uh, silver tape that has a, uh, an, a pull strip on one side that you remove. Uh, the only other thing that you need for this is a, either a yardstick or a, a nice ruler, depending upon the size of your painting. I'm building a pouch that will transport uh, two of my favorite sizes of paper to paint on. This one is 16 by 12. Uh, I also enjoy 12 by 12 squares. So this size pouch will work for either one. The, it requires, since this is 48 inches wide, I can get two pouches out of this width. I've measured off 36 inches. The first step in this is determining what length of the um, reflectix to cut. Since I want the pouch to contain this size painting, the easiest way I have found to do it is to place the painting on there, fold the material over until it covers the painting, and then place a use a, um, a black marker to, to mark your edge. And that way you know that you can cut it and it will cover that painting once you slip it inside. So cutting is the next thing that I have to do. The, one of the nice things about uh, Reflectix is that in the going across it, it, it is uh, pressed into channels, so that gives you a, a straight cutting edge. You don't really have to mark it all the way across. You'll be able to find it. So here we go on this first cut. You can see how easily the scissors go through it and how easily it cuts. So um, I will complete this and show you the next step. I have also determined that for the paintings I want this pouch to include, uh, 24 inches across by the three feet that we had already measured, uh, I can cut this particular one that's 48 inches wide, I can cut it in half, and that will give me two pouches. Um, I, for the, uh, to, to cut along the length of Reflectix, you will have to mark that with um, a black marker. So I've measured off 24 inches. 
drawn my line, and that's what I'll cut on now. You can hear that little popping sound. Uh, sandwiched between this aluminum is something that appears to be similar to uh, bubble wrap. That's what I'm assuming it is. I haven't looked at the specs for it. Another thing that you can consider a, a very good aspect of reflective is that it's manufactured for use in wrapping for a lot of different things, but for wrapping um, duct, duct, air conditioning ducts in the attic, and as well, um, so you know they can withstand heat. And the silver tape that I use is also manufactured for this. So uh, again, uh, if you had to leave them in the car in this Texas heat that we have sometimes, um, you, you should not have any problem. Okay, we're progressing pretty far on this little pouch. Um, I have the piece that I've cut that's three feet by 24 inches, and I have I folded it in half, which you see right here. If you're working by yourself, uh, it's still a very easy thing to do. Once you fold it in half, you might want to weight it down with something to help you out a little bit and, and keep that press down. Um, the thing that I found that makes it much easier for me, uh, working alone especially, is to draw a, um, a guideline for the tape <clears throat> on the edge of the reflective. Um, to double this, uh, to, to wrap it from one side to the other, I have marked it off at 7 eighths of an inch. That gives me enough clearance that I know it's going to securely hit the other side. Um, you don't have to do this little line. I just find it helps me. Uh, you, can, you can eyeball it if you want to. But I found that it helps me uh, keep, it, keep it straight. The tape, the silver tape, has a backing on it that you peel away. So I get it started just a little bit and then put it at the um, bottom corner of my line. I keep pulling the, the backing as I go across. Keep my <clears throat> and it adheres very quickly. It's not something you have to really press on and, and wonder and worry that it's going to stick or not stick. Actually, uh, and so this is the backing, throw that away, press that down, and that's, uh, that's done. I've actually cut a, a second one while I was cutting for the other side. But the step now is I have this down on this one side. What I found is the easiest thing to do, first of all, um, I have, you have this thickness of the two layers. So just press this down just over the edge, kind of pressing those two edges together before you start the wrap. Um, it's, it's kind of a thing to experiment with, see what works for you. <clears throat> see what works best for you. Flip it over and start from one end and push that tape on over. Keep pressing down on that outer edge so you can have as tight a seal as possible. And that's one edge. Okay, uh, now that both ends, both edges are taped with a silver tape, there's an open end. And it's like an open end envelope. I can take my hanger, just easily slide it in, pick 
it up and transport it so easily. The glass is protected, uh, the frame itself, the wood on the frame, protected from chipping. Um, and that's it. I think uh, it's extremely economical and an easy way to go to, to, um, to transport your paintings. I'm going to figure out the cost I, out of this 25-foot uh, roll. The 25-foot roll cost uh, 25 Okay, so how economical is it to make these pouches? Um, from this roll, which costs $42 at Home Depot, I have already made uh, four 24 by 18 pouches, six 16 by 12 pouches. So, and I have this much left over. Um, so, at the cost of $42, and I have 10 made already, that is a base cost of $4.20. It's actually, of course, going to be less than that since I, I have more left over and um, to, to, con to continue. That's only 10, I need six more. That'll cover everything. Um, the, the pouch that I made for the 12 by 16, I think it's going to be versatile. I could, for the 12 by 12 painting, I could make it a little bit smaller, the pouch a little bit smaller, but honestly, there's no need to do that. Um, it's not for shipping where I need something tight around it. It is only for transporting in the car. So um, I will keep this 12 by 16 size, even for my 12 by 12 painting. And you see how easily they flip in. One thing that you could do if you uh, wanted to, if you felt like you needed to keep your paintings more secure, is when you're measuring off the length of it, add a little bit extra, bring it over for a flap, and use a Velcro tab um, to hold it down. I did try that in one, but honestly don't feel it's necessary for the purpose I'm making them. Um, again, it's, it's a... And the other advantage that I found that I like so much, if I made these out of um, bubble wrap, bubble wrap doesn't hold its shape. It'll collapse and you have to work to get your painting in. This is it's rigid enough that it will hold its shape. You don't have to fool with it so much. You don't have to fiddle with it. And um, The one thing I am going to do, though, is have a label on the back, on, on the back of each painting. And I may also clip one to the outside so that we'll know what, what, we're, what we're doing. Probably not. I don't think that's going to be necessary. Let's so go in and out. So easy. Well, I hope this has helped um, a, a good tip for you and that you'll be able to use it. Um, you can, of course, buy pouches for your paintings online. Um, they're a great deal more expensive, but um, if you only need one or two, that's no problem. Uh, needing 16, 17, 18, maybe 19, I wanted something a little bit more economical. Thanks for watching. Um, my paintings are always online at carolynhancock.com. kind of a PS to the procedure for making the pouches. Um, of course, depending upon the size of your, the thickness, the width of your frame, another thing that you can consider is putting the package, putting the painting back to back and putting two of them in the pouch. It fits very easily, uh, even on my 16 by 16 they go in and you could carry them that way. I don't want to do that because that means that one of the paintings will be upside down. 
Um, with pastel, a lot of times there is a migration of the pastel. If there's any loose dust, it would fall down toward the glass, and I don't want that to happen. But it is another economical way to do it. If you were, for instance, going to transport them in a car uh, between the seats, and you could hold them upright like that, back to back would be no problem, and uh, another cost-effective tip. Thanks.